Well, hello, I'm Josh and I'm back once again with another great film to tell you about. And given that we are now in the holiday season, I thought it would be a great time to tell you about Alan Barron's 1961 holiday-themed film noir classic, Blast of Silence. Set during Christmas time, Blast of Silence follows hitman Frankie Bono, who comes to New York City to kill a small mob boss. But while he's there, he ends up running into an old friend and his sister, who causes him to open up and become more vulnerable. Emotions that, as a hitman, Bono knows he can't let himself feel, knowing that it will compromise his actual mission. So this is really a one-of-a-kind film. It has all the grit and greatness of a film noir you would expect from the time, except this one is also shot on location in New York City. As I said, this film was directed by Alan Barron, and it was made on a shoestring budget of $20,000, and incorporates a number of stolen shots taken right off the streets of New York. A number of times they would shoot out of the window of a moving van, following actors as they walk through crowds of real pedestrians moving through the city. And another interesting thing to look out for, the film's climax is on kind of the outskirts of the city where it's notably seen to be very windy, and this was not the result of some large fans off screen that you would normally see on a Hollywood set. The wind was actually caused by a hurricane that was somewhat nearby, and though it was probably not the safest way to shoot, they clearly got some great results as these shots look fantastic and really contribute to the overall emotions of the scene. And the film has since been cited to be quite influential to a number of notable directors. Martin Scorsese, for one, is a huge supporter of it, and you can definitely see a lot of especially early Scorsese, like Mean Streets and Who's That Knocking on My Door, with all the on-location footage showing the grittier side of New York City that the big-budget Hollywood films rarely show. And at times, the film also shows an almost step-by-step -step walkthrough of the hitman's process that can also be seen in some of Scorsese's gangster films as well. In addition, the fact that Alan Barron wrote, directed, and starred in this, which I believe was also his first film, he ended up getting a number of comparisons with Orson Welles, who you may know also made a pretty critically acclaimed first film. And originally, Barron had actually cast Columbo actor Peter Falk in the starring role. Falk was a friend of Barron, and knowing the budget, I believe Falk had actually agreed to work for free, given that he didn't get any other work. And as you can see, Falk did end up getting cast in the film, called Murder, Inc. So Falk left this film, and after finding no other actors he thought could fit the role, Baron ended up casting himself as Frankie Bono. And though I believe Baron did have prior acting experience, acting and directing is quite tough even on big sets where there's tons of help around, so you can imagine the challenge of doing it on this, a low-budget film where, though yes, most of the outdoor sets are pre-made and right there in front of you, and you can just kind of point and shoot, your control of the surroundings is much more limited. Directing low-budget films alone can be quite stressful, so you can imagine playing the lead role on top of that could be pretty overwhelming. Still, he carries the film well, and since the character is supposed to be kind of emotionless, I'm sure that made it a bit easier on him, maybe, though that does change a bit as the film goes on. And along with him, you have many people like Larry Tucker, who plays Big Ralph, this really strange gun dealer who keeps pet rats. And though he didn't act in too many other films, his other big movie role was in Samuel Fuller's Shock Corridor and he went on to be a pretty well-regarded writer and did some of his best work with director Paul Mazursky on films like Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Other than him, you also have Molly McCarthy who does a great job as Frankie's kind of love interest, Lori, along with Danny Meehan who plays Frankie's friend Petey from The Orphanage. Now normally when you see a lot of low-budget films, one of the things you really come to expect is that the acting is going to feel a little more amateur, but here that is simply not the case. All the actors feel so natural, and many of the characters feel just as real as the locations they're shooting in. 
Another great actor who goes completely uncredited in this film is Lionel Stander, and he is perfect as the narrator on this film. His gravelly voice really gives everything this rough and gruff quality, which helps make the film feel that much grittier. I'd like to be quick and silent while he's away from his bodyguards. It'll be a job for a gun. That means another bad moment, another contact. Your hands sweat a little on the wheel, remembering another Christmas, running from the cops. Stander was apparently blacklisted at the time, which was why he was willing to do such a low-budget film. And though I don't believe he did many other big roles, he can be found in a number of pretty major films from big directors. And you may be wondering why I'm talking about a film noir called Blast of Silence so close to Christmas. And while I agree this may not be one to put on your Christmas movie queue alongside It's a Wonderful Life, the film does take place around Christmas time and the holiday does become a larger element of the plot than you might think. The whole aspect of the holiday where everyone's cheerful and spending time with their families and loved ones becomes a big issue for Bono who at first just tries to ignore it. The film paints a striking dichotomy of this hardened killer moving through the cheery streets filled with snow and bright lights. Everyone rushing around doing holiday shopping and enjoying the Christmas lights. Bono tries to stay detached because that is how he can be such a good hitman. But once he finds himself with old friends at a Christmas party, he can't help but feel emotions. He longs for a family and he begins to feel love for his old friend's sister. And this is ultimately what becomes his downfall as a killer, though it makes him more human. So if you want to watch this film, your options are a little more slim. I couldn't find it streaming many places at the moment. You might be able to find it on YouTube or Internet Archive or something like that, but it's certainly nowhere to rent or buy. Luckily though, as I showed you earlier, the Criterion Collection has released a very nice edition of this. Sadly, it is only on DVD at the moment, which is a bit of a bummer, but it looks great nonetheless. It has some really interesting bonus features, including extensive interviews with the director and star Alan Barron, and they even go on a tour of the shooting locations and show side-by-side -side shots of what the streets in New York look like now. And the packaging also has this really cool graphic novel-esque cover by Sean Phillips, who if you don't know, he's a pretty famous graphic novel artist, most famously known for his kind of various crime comics he makes with Ed Brubaker. And given that context, you can see he's a pretty good fit for this film. The art is just great, and in addition to the usual booklet you get with Criterion Discs, Phillips also made a small graphic novel adaptation of the film as well. And though it's not too extensive, it certainly adds a lot of value to buying this, even though it's not on Blu-ray. So anyways, that is Blast of Silence. And now for my comment question, I am wondering, what is your favorite movie set during Christmas time? Notice that I did not specifically say Christmas movie, as you do have films like Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, really a number of Shane Black films, along with Batman Returns and Gremlins, which use the holiday of Christmas as an element in the story without making the whole film completely about the holiday. To be honest, you can actually make a kind of similar case for It's Wonderful Life, which most people consider to be a Christmas classic, so you don't really have to think about it too hard. Just put your favorites in the comments section down below and start discussing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see some more of these. I'll be back next week with another real Christmas classic, so stay tuned for that. Keep watching movies and I will see you next week.